Have you been looking for a mixed media project with plenty of texture and you love the grungy style? If you are a junk journaler or art journal, then this altered composition book may be just the project for you. It has been one of my favorites in my quest to alter, oh, I think I've done about a dozen composition notebook journals. My name's Peg, and I do call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media, and I like to work on journals. That's kind of my thing, creating the journal itself. I use them to diary or to document in. I also enjoy encaustic wax, and there's just a ton of other things that I've gotten myself into, and I just was looking at my list for 2023, and there's a lot more that I'm hoping to learn and do during the course of this year. So I hope you'll join me by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. So let's get started on this grungy journal. The first thing I did was mixed up some plaster of Paris, very inexpensive. And I also used this white acrylic paint. This is just hardware store paint that I utilized to make my texture paste and my homemade gesso, etc. But I'm going to utilize it in making my version of Venetian plaster. So let's start with equal amounts of water and paint. And I just marked a, I don't have a measuring cup over here in my studio. So I just marked a Sharpie line on one of my tubs that I use and poured the water and the paint to the same amount. I'm putting a dollop of Elmer's glue in and now mixing in the plaster of Paris to get it to the consistency that I want. Plaster of Paris is really easy to find. I think I bought this in the home improvement section of Walmart or the you know discount store. You can probably find it at any hardware store, any big box hardware store, but it's inexpensive, easy to find, easy to use. I'm mixing that up and you'll see the consistency. I want it about the consistency of texture paste, maybe a little bit uh, less runny than texture paste or, or less goopy than texture paste, if you will. So I hope you can tell the consistency that I'm getting it to when I lift it up with that uh, craft stick. But I'm not measuring. I'm adding the plaster of Paris, stirring, adding some more until I get to a consistency where it doesn't drift, drip off that craft stick. So now we have it where I want it. I'm putting it onto the composition notebook with a little... Um, craft knife or craft little spatula, craft spatula, if you will, that you get, you know, to mix up your paint. I'm covering the spine with some masking tape to prevent the plaster of Paris or my fake Venetian plaster from getting onto the spine. And I want this nice and um, not thick, but I want it to cover every available spot on the front cover of this composition book. And I want it to have lots of texture, just like you would um, plaster a wall with Venetian plaster. You don't want it ridgy, but you want to be able to see some texture in the wall, if that makes sense. So I'm going to get this covered. And I'm kind of dapping with that palette knife to make sure that every spot where that composition book is peeking through is covered. So I think we have pretty, pretty good coverage now. So I want it 
to have this, I'm, I'm kind of into circles right now. So I wanted it to have the circle theme on it, if you will. So I have grabbed just an old uh, skeleton from a roll of ribbon, I think was on this, ribbon, maybe tape, I'm not exactly sure what was on this, but I just took that and as you can see, pressed it into the plaster of Paris until I had covered just about every section of that cover with some type of circle. I want to make sure that my edges are covered, but not um, rigid, if you will. So I'm, that's why I took my finger around the outside edge of this. So there we go. Now I have everything done. I have allowed it to dry. I walked away and um, let it dry for a good two or three hours and then kind of came back and hit it with my blow dryer to make sure that it was nice and dry, then sanded the top of it to give it a nice finish. So it, I took off any little jagged spot, etc. So now my thought process on this, my first thought process was let's paint this gold and then we'll come in with some stains, some ink stains and go over the top of this gold. So let's go ahead and get that done. Now, I, I want to tell you now, this is not how I wound up finishing this. This was my first thought. It didn't work out, but I thought I'd go ahead and leave it in here so you could just kind of see how those um, distress oxide stains react to the paint and the, and the plaster of Paris. So I'm drying that with my blow dryer and it's actually not bad, just gold. Kind of kind of like that. I think if I would dry brush that with a little bit of, of brown, that might that might look pretty good. But I came in with a tea dyed distress oxide stain or distress oxide ink, sprayed it on, and then came back with a walnut distress oxide ink and sprayed that. I allowed this to dry overnight because I was afraid to utilize my hair dryer because I thought it would move the ink because the ink appeared to be kind of puddling on top of it. I like the way that looks right now, but um, take a look at it now after it's dried overnight. So here's what, here's what we have the next morning. It looks almost um, milky if that's a word, but it has that haze to it. And that, well, let me take the tape off and see if that looks any better. And, you know, I wasn't, I just wasn't thrilled with this. So I thought something, something's not right here. So I took a wet baby wipe and rubbed it over. And sure enough, that, that distress oxide ink was just rubbing, rubbing right off. Some of it settled in, but not really enough to get the look that, that I was going for. Am I unhappy with the way this looks right now? Eh, probably not. But is it the look that I wanted or that I envisioned when I started on this project? And it truly wasn't. So, you know, in all of my wisdom or lack thereof, I thought I'll just darken this up a little bit by rubbing over the top of it with my black stays on ink. And that was what I will refer to as a complete disaster because that did not work out at all. But stick with me, stick with me because we're gonna figure this out and, you know, sometimes I think it's important to show the actual process of a project rather than editing out all the steps that didn't work out. So now I thought it, this, 
not good. I'm going to cover it all up and start from scratch. I pulled out the raw umber paint and I am covering everything. So I, I literally just um, made mistakes that, that I can't, that I can't fix. Well, I take that back. I am fixing them, that, but I am fixing them with a complete coat of raw umber paint. I have my old blow dryer from years gone by that I dried that off with. Now that it's good and dry, I have some pure gold um, paint that I'm dry brushing over the top of this raw umber. So there we go. And I think that this is looking much better than what I had before. So there's that layer of gold underneath this raw umber, the layer of Distress Oxide inks that you can't see anymore. But now we have the coat of raw umber and the dry brush of the pure gold paint. I am taking my brush to cover the edges of this cover to make sure that those edges have some gold on them as well. So now we have all that gold on. Let me pull off that strip. And now I think this is actually looking like I want it to look. I love the texture in this, this plaster of Paris or my faux version of a Venetian plaster, I think it's looking great. I have ordered, and I will um, put a link to these on my Amazon storefront so you can find them easily, and you can catch my Amazon storefront um, over on my website at tooldcrowsmixmedia.com. It is under supplies, and it is a direct link to that storefront. These are file cabinet, um, the things that you buy to put on the front of a file cabinet. And I am attaching one to the front of this with brads. So I'm looking for my craft pick to poke my holes. I marked where I want that to be. And when I took my, when I took my uh, file folder piece off, or file cabinet piece off. I couldn't see the black mark because the cover's so dark, but I just held the held it into position and used my craft pick to go through the hole, and that worked out fine. Attaching those with these small brads, and these small brads came in a container. I'll link that. Also, I'll make sure that that is in my supply list on my website as well, because both of these things work out good to have. This little file cabinet piece comes 10 in a package, and I think the package was like four or five dollars. I'm not exactly sure, but but you'll be able to see over on over on the storefront. I'm going to stamp notes on a sheet of paper, and that will finish and stick it down inside that uh, front, and that will finish this. Now to determine what to put on the outside back, inside front, and inside back. And I chose, and I'm going to speed this up because it's really not overly relevant to the video, but I am doing some magazine image pulls from the Restoration Hardware magazine to utilize on that outside back, the inside front, and the inside back. I've put a thin coat of raw umber on the press, put that magazine image down, and as you can see, you can see the furniture stage there. That's just a chair sitting in front of a tree or a you know, indoor plant. And now I'm gonna pull that with copper and uh, a little bit of gold. See how that looks.
just using my br uh, brayer to, or my, um, I can't remember what that thing's called, but, you know, just trying to get the image to pull. And I pulled those in a number of different colors and I've decided to utilize the ones that I've pulled in parchment um, for the inside front and the inside back. On the outside back here, what you are seeing is the uh, pull of the front image in the in the first inside sheet in that restoration hardware book which was the outside image of a building and i think that looks really good um, you'll be able to see more in the finished photos on how those look but i didn't want to get into a big uh, gel press printing session in in this video but did want you to know what i did with those inside front, inside back, and outside back covers. So here's the finished product. And we will just take a look at how everything goes. Thank you for sticking with me through my first mistake. I appreciate that. And of course, as you know, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel, go over, check out my website. I've done a lot of things on it to improve it. I'm working on it still, but it's getting there. So, so check it out. And if you do see something in a video that you would like to know where I got it, you can pick it up in the Amazon storefront where I do make a small commission if you purchase, but it doesn't increase your price. So thank you very much. Glad to have you here. Your comments are always appreciated. And that like button does help my channel. So hit that like button, throw me a comment, and subscribe, and you will make me a very happy gal. Bye for now.